It is time once again. 2022 is over, and it's time to talk about some fighting games. The more we move away from 2020, the better things get. This year, more tournaments have been able to run offline, and things just keep getting better and better. Even though we didn't have as many big releases as we did last year, this year is still jam-packed with some notable titles. So without further ado, I give you the 2022 Fighting Game Year in Review. 2022 began with the 15th coming of the King of Fighters. KOF 15 builds upon the gameplays of KOF 14 while bringing the roster back to basics cutting most of the newcomers and replacing them with fan favorites like Ash Crimson and K999. KOF is a fast, team-based fighter that has a big emphasis on movement centered around the four types of universal jumps KOF is known for. This was my year's most anticipated fighting game, and it did not disappoint. It's everything I expected, but I wouldn't say my expectations were shattered. Once the honeymoon phase wore off, its flaws began the show. The matchmaking is currently broken and has been for a long time. The lobby system leaves a lot to be desired, and the tutorial is just bare bones. There really is nothing in this game to help new players pick it up, which I think has negatively affected it. It's good that SNK didn't try to dumb down the gameplay, but nowadays you need to do more than the bare minimum. Releasing so early in the year, it was able to release its first wave of DLC, and overall, I think it was pretty average. Although, selling us characters that were already DLC in KOF 14, and selling Orochi forms of Chris, Yashiro, and Shermi, is just unacceptable. At the very least, we got Rugal for free. That being said, I still love KOF 15, but... I'm just not happy with how SNK has been handling things, and I'm starting to get Samurai Showdown 2019 flashbacks. Hopefully, with Season 2 and the crossplay update, SNK can turn things around. If you're a fan of KOF or a fighting game enthusiast, give it a shot. But if you're a new player, I'd try something a little bit more beginner friendly. If you'd like a more in-depth look at the game, check out my review of it here. I only know three things about Phantom Breaker Omnia. It came out in 2022, it's a fighting game, and I've never seen anyone talk about it outside of its, let's say, interesting trailer. Honestly, just watch the trailer for this game and then decide if it's worth your time. Never did I think I'd see this game again. Persona 4 Arena. Ultimax is a remaster of 2013's game of the same name. As far as remasters go, this one is pretty standard. It has all of the DLC, including characters, music, and story, along with state-of-the-art delay-based netcode. That's right, this game released with the same terrible online it had nearly a decade ago. But don't you worry, because they heard our complaints and they added rollback netcode. Half a year later. I do not understand why they didn't just, you know, delay the game until the new online was ready and then just release the product. Because what little momentum this remaster had was killed when fans were basically told the game will have good online, you know, eventually. As far as remasters go, they did a good job, and at the very least, it's great more people can play this game on modern systems. Blunders aside, P4 Arena is a unique fighter when it comes to Arc System Works games. You've got four attack buttons, two regular attacks, and two Persona attacks. Since it's based off of an RPG series, Persona 4 Arena has a ton of mechanics you won't find anywhere else like multiple status ailments, character-specific buffs, and the Persona meter. Persona Arena is built around the Persona system. Each user uses their other self to attack. It makes gameplay stand out from other fighters, and it really hasn't been replicated since. They did a great job translating RPG to fighting game. If you're a fan of Blaze Blue, Exerd, or anime fighters in general, 
and you haven't played it yet, I recommend you give it a try. If you're a Persona fan though, I discourage you from playing this game as it contains heavy spoilers for Persona 3 and 4. If you want to get into Persona, just play Persona 4 or 5. But you need to know, real gamers play the best Persona game. Persona 3 FES. Not portable, portable is trash. Seriously though, when is Persona 5 Arena? What is Atlas doing? What is Arc System working on? I sure hope they aren't co-developing another fighting game based off of a niche IP. Co-developed by Arc System Works and Neopol, DNF Duel is the newest fighter on the market. Based off of the Dungeon and Fighter series, DNF already had its root in the ancestors of fighting games, beat-em-ups. So making a 2D fighter based off of the property you know, seemed like a no-brainer. With Arxis assisting and having rollback netcode out of the box, it seemed like DNF had a guaranteed recipe for success. Come June 28th, the game came out and, well, that's really it. I think it's fair to say the game didn't light the world on fire. DNF Duel is a 4 button fighter with 2 attack buttons and 2 special move buttons, one of which use a meter. When I played this game, I got the same feeling I got when I played Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. Unengaged and bored. Something about the movement, it just doesn't click and it feels really unsatisfying to do combos. My main takeaway from the gameplay of DNF was it was like eating dry, dry chicken. And I did not want any more. After what happened with Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, I was apprehensive to jump into another fighting game based off of an IP I've never heard of, and seems like many people felt the same way. Although, I wouldn't blame you if you didn't know this game came out because the marketing and communication from the devs has been non-existent, which is the main reason why I think the game has fallen off. It doesn't help that the game was snubbed from major tournaments like EVO, leading to even less exposure. It isn't even going to be at EVO Japan 2023. Virtual Fighter is going to be at EVO Japan 2023. I just don't get it. Despite all of that, DNF isn't dead. And if you want to give it a shot, I'm going to encourage you to do so. And if you love DNF, Keep playing it, and rep it regardless of public opinion. The game is finally getting content, people are coming back, and the game is a bit cheaper. So now is the perfect time to jump in. DNF Duel might have not been it for me, but it could be it for you. DNF has had its rough patch, but it can only go up from here. So stay strong, DNF fans. I'm rooting for you. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R is an updated version of the PS3 original from 2013. The game has been completely rebalanced, new mechanics have been implemented like the assist system, the combo system has been completely reworked, and 12 new characters have been added with additional characters to be released via the season pass. I actually reviewed this game earlier this year, which you can find here. But to keep things brief, All-Star Battle R is a great expansion that improves the original in every way except the online which is still really, really, really bad. All-Star Battle R is a 4 button fighter with 3 attacks and 1 style button that changes depending on the character. For example, Characters with Hamon get EX moves when inputting the special with the style button, while stand users can do stand cancels. Its gameplay is really unique and feels like a mix between Street Fighter, Anime Fighters, and a little bit of Mortal Kombat. If you like JoJo, give this game a shot. It has fan service galore. If you like fighting games, I also recommend you give it a try, because this game has some of the most interesting characters in any fighting game. Each character have their own style and have something unique to bring to the table. We got one guy over here with a meter, we've got another guy over here with like this baby, this guy turns people into snails, this guy is just Ryu, and I don't even know what this guy is doing, he's on a horse, he can't walk, he's crippled. 
you're gonna have to read part 7 to understand that one. If you want a fun game just to mess around with friends, then this is the game for you. I'm warning you though, the netcode is legendarily bad. I would expect nothing less from Bandai Namco. Honestly, it should be considered a war crime at this point to release so many great games with the worst online possible. The final major release of the year. Kinda. Them's Fightin' Herds. Initially came out in 2020, but I never talked about it. It received a wider release on all major consoles this year, giving me the perfect opportunity to talk about it. So, Them's Fightin' Herds is a fighting game, and um, you fight, you play as barnyard animals, it's, it's about it. I never played this game, but I felt obliged to at least let people know it existed. So here you go. Now you know the game exists. Whether that makes your life better or worse, I don't really care. So, if you like My Little Ponies, or games with puns in their name that are really bad, this is the game for you. And that was all of the new fighting games from 2022. Out of all the games that came out this year, which one was your favorite? Obviously, I have to go with the King of Fighters 15, but I'd be lying to you if I didn't say All-Star Battle R wasn't a guilty pleasure of mine. But it's not over yet, not by a long shot. As per tradition, we'll be checking out how other fighting games did this year. And we'll start from the top of last year's lineup. We have here Virtua Fighter 5. Uh, please put it on anything other than PS4 and remove Absorb Netcode. Thanks. Moving on to Guilty Gear Strive. Strive keeps moving along with its DLC characters and balance patches. It's no secret that I've fallen out of love with this game, but I don't think the game is bad. Just not for me. All things considered, it's in a good spot and I'm glad Arc System Works is finally seeing the success they've deserved for years regardless. Type Lumina is doing everything right. Free DLC, and listening to the fans, and adding Neko Arc. The game just keeps getting better and better with every balance patch, and the future is looking bright for Type Lumina. I go into more detail in my latest patch review where Fate Go saved the game. So if you're interested, please check it out. Grand Blue Fantasy. Great game, but where rollback? Honestly, how do you announce an online tournament with that trash netcode? Like, you come to EVO, you have a great top 8, and then you're just like, hey, we're gonna have an online tournament, see you in netplay. It, it almost feels like a joke. Hopefully, Psy Games will pull through because the real Grand Blue Fantasy is the game having functional online. Under Night in Birth, not in the best of spots right now. The game is stuck in a sort of limbo. It has subpar netcode and all of French Bread's current attention is going towards Melty Blood. So while I think Under Night will get another chance to shine one day, that day will not be soon, but hopefully I'm wrong. Samurai Showdown will embrace rollback in January, but in my opinion, it's too little too late. It's nice good faith that SNK is willing to support one of its older games and not just putting all the attention in KOF 15, but they did a terrible job with Samurai Showdown 2019, and I don't think any amount of rollback will save the game, unfortunately. Mortal Kombat. Now, Mortal Kombat's weird too, because no MK12 anywhere to be seen. They told us like, hey, we're not going to be at the Game Awards, which you know what? I respect because then people were get the disappointment out of the way, but no MK12 or Injustice 3. So NetherRealm Studios is really taking their time with this next game. And you know, I hope they deliver. Soul Calibur. After Soul Calibur 6, I don't think we're going to be seeing another Soul Calibur until after Tekken 8 is released, which is a shame because man do I love me some Soul Calibur. Hopefully for Soul Calibur 7, they could put a little bit more budget into it than Soul Calibur 6, and maybe if Tekken 8 has good online, Soul Calibur 7 can have good online. Blaze Blue isn't in the worst of states, it isn't in the best of states, 
Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle and Blaze Blue Central Fiction both received rollback, but with the success of Strive, it's unclear when we'll get another entry into the Blaze Blue series. If at all, given that the Blaze Blue mobile game did not do well and was shut down, and I believe the head honcho behind Blaze Blue is no longer working at Arc System Works. Dragon Dragon Rock the Dragon. Dragon Ball Fighters announced an announcement for rollback that has been announced and that it will be announced that the announcement has been announced. You'll get your rollback one day, Dragon Ball fans. Godspeed. Tekken. Tekken have a lot more to prove with Tekken 8 as they have yet to implement good online in a Tekken game. If Tekken 8 doesn't have rollback, it'll be a real spit in the face to hardcore fans. Oh, and please put a tutorial in Tekken 8. Tekken is a series based on legacy knowledge, and some of that knowledge should be in the game, not in YouTube tutorials, despite how many views they get me. Wink, wink. Even though those tutorials are really bad and outdated, please don't watch them. Last but not least, we've got Street Fighter. Street Fighter V, no new content, not a big surprise, but everyone is really just waiting for Street Fighter VI, which I'm extremely excited for, because for once, it looks like, not only does it look like a fighting game, it looks like a video game with content. Joking aside, Street Fighter VI is shaping up to be amazing and could possibly set the new baseline for modern fighting games, and I'm all for it. I'm crossing my fingers. Capcom, please deliver like you delivered for Resident Evil, and like how you delivered for Monster Hunter, and like how you delivered for Devil May Cry, because Street Fighter fans really need a W after SF5. And there you have it, the 2022 fighting game year in review. Last year I talked about KOF 13 and Exert getting rollback, and Exert actually got rollback, so I'm crossing my fingers for KOF 13, and I actually really do want Grand Blue to get rollback, because I really enjoy the game, but the online is just, again, terrible. But if Exert can get it, any game can get rollback. 2022 was definitely quite the year for me. I thought I was going to be a lot less busy than I was. I was in my final year of university and that took up a majority of my time. So I wasn't as productive as I wanted to be. But what I did get out this year, I have to say I am happy with. Specifically, Weird Fighting Games Episode 2. I'm really happy with how that turned out and I plan to make more in the future. But you know, making content wouldn't be nearly as special without everybody watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. So if you made it this far in the video and you haven't clicked off, this is the part where I say thank you for watching in 2022. You guys are truly the best. As for 2023, I plan to keep making more fighting game related content and maybe some type moon related content. But until that time comes, I hope you all have a fantastic 2023, and like always, thanks for watching, have a great day, and goodbye.